welcome back to Pond House Garden. Last night we had an epic storm here, the first storm of fall, and uh, it rained and it winded and it took power outage and uh, it, it was just uh, it was just a big cleanup for everything that usually comes in October. So we're now in November. We're about two weeks off of the typical situation. Um, usually things have frosted by the time October 31st comes around. We hadn't experienced that. Uh, we are in zone 8B. We're here on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Um, so things are definitely a little bit different this year. Um, you can hear a little bit of noise in the backyard here. We're actually um, winterizing the boat, but normally we would have had the boat winterized by now. So, so we're behind, uh, but justifiably because we had a really nice, long, warm summer. So that being said, the dahlias need to come out and be winterized. Uh, I was at the pond house yesterday and I posted a video about that. Um, we did all of the stock cutting for the dahlias at the pond house. Uh, Mom, Dad and I had a great day together, a great afternoon of uh, tagging and cutting and uh, we covered it with, you'll see all of it today. Uh, I'm going to go through the same process that we did at the pond house. I'm going to do that here and I'm going to do it in between rainstorms because we keep getting rain on and off again all day. So I'm going to hustle and get things done and I will walk you through step by step. The very first thing that I have to do is grab my pruners uh, to cut the dahlia stalks and um, also a solution uh, that I can dip my pruners into in between cutting each stalk. And this will prevent me spreading any kind of disease from dahlia tuber to dahlia tuber. So you always wanna make sure that you have a bleach solution with your pruners and it's about uh, one part bleach to 10 parts of water. So let's go and get started. All right, so I've got my uh red solo cup <laughs> compliments of a farmer ben's eggs a friend of ours uh we've got a bleach solution in here it's just two caps of bleach and 20 capfuls of water and that goes along with my fisker pruners which i will dip in here in between every stalk that i cut so let's go over and do the very first one together here we go so i'm going to make sure to Fully dip the pruners. There we go. Make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'm simply going to cut six inches up the stalk. So it's about a handle, a handle's worth here. That's about six inches right there. So if you measure from the area that the stalk comes out of the ground up, then I would cut it right around here. And I do that to this other one as well. Just strip this back so you can see this a bit better. So again, just a handle's worth. And so I'm just gonna cut right about here. All right, so I also wanna make sure that I have the label on here, and I do. It's Miss Tegan, and I want this label to be nice and close to uh, the where the stock comes out and where the tuber is because I'm going to dig this up in about a week or so and I want to make sure that this tag doesn't come loose from here. And I will continue doing that process, re-dipping the pruner um, as we go along and I'll continue it down the entire length of the bed on both sides. And this is step one, and it always makes me a little bit sad. <laughs> I enjoy the dahlias so much, and luckily they are a long blooming flower or a long blooming plant. And so I've definitely had my share of beautiful bouquets inside the house this year, so I can't complain, but it's always hard to say goodbye. Here we go.
Okay, it is actually really cold out here. <laughs> And it went a lot faster at the pond house yesterday when there was like three of us working together. So, um, so it's, it's uh, quite the job, but we're getting it done. It's a bit of a mess. So I will go in here and I will rake all of the um, excess debris up and out of the beds. I will make sure that each and every one of these are um, tagged like this one, Bloomquist Speed. Um, and then once I have it all cleaned up and make sure it's tagged, I will go and I will add the tin foil to each of the stalks. Now, why are we adding the tin foil? We'll take a look at this one, for instance. This is popcorn. So look at the diameter of the inside of the stalk and it's hollow. So what it will do now is it will catch all the rainwater um, and it will, it will be subjected to freezing, which means that we could end up with crown rot uh, for the tubers. So in order to avoid that, we cover it full, uh, or sorry, we Ooh, I'm so cold, my lips won't even work. We cover the stock with uh, tin foil, which you'll see in a minute. And then it prevents any rain, gives it a little bit of protection uh, for the stock. And then when we leave the tuber in for another week or week and a half, this allows the eyes to be more pronounced for us for dividing. So the idea is, is we cut it, we leave the tubers in for about a week and a week and a half, like I just said, and um, this will promote new um, growth under the soil. So, uh, and then we will do another video which shows us digging it up and where we store the tubers for winter. Oh boy, what a job. All right, I'm gonna get on it right now and then I'll break for a quick bite to eat and warm up and we'll get back to the tin foil. <laughs> can you see my breath? I can, I don't know if you can. Holy man. Oh yes, and here is one of the piles of the dahlias. So we will definitely end up taking this to the uh, compost facility. And I've got another one started way over there on that side. So one bed and uh, two great big piles of debris to get rid of. Right, and also dad and I were talking about the wire that we like to use to tie the dahlias to the support system. And this is it right here. So it's a, pla a green plastic wrapped piece of wire and it comes in a big roll um, at uh, garden centers. You can buy it from there. You may be able to buy it online in Amazon. I haven't bought it there personally. I've bought it through our greenhouse supplier. Um, but it comes in a mega roll and then you can simply cut it with wire cutters and you can reuse these lengths in future years in your garden. Really easy to untie, really easy to tie and also really easy to tie to one another. You can just twist them together and make longer lengths if you have cut them too short. So this is a real plus to have in your dahlia garden when you are dealing with support. Okay, so now I have uh, Miss Tegan and she is cut back to about six inches here on her stalks. And what I'll do now is I'll take some uh, tin foil and I'll just wrap it around uh, each one of these so that I make sure that the frost and the water can't collect inside while they are still sitting in the soil. And I'll do that with every single one of these. Okay, mission accomplished. They are all now covered. Uh, the stalks are now all covered in tin foil. I'll give you a closer look here. Hold on. And now uh, everything is tagged. Everything is tin foiled. So we will leave everything in here for the next week or week and a half or so. And then I will take a uh, fork. Some people will use a shovel and I will dig up the tubers and I will start another video showing you phase two of the winterization process. Now, of course, you can grow dahlias as annuals. You don't have to save them like I'm doing. However, if you are a collector or if you do show uh, flowers in your uh, uh, local flower um, competitions or contests, then you'll want to preserve your good tubers. So that's why we go to great lengths like this to save the collection and to save the really good uh, vibrant uh, growers, the tubers. So, uh, Alternatives, yes, there are alternatives to winterizing and storing your dahlias. These, this isn't the only way that you can deal with it, but this is the way that my family does. 
Um, maybe next year I will show you a couple different ways, a couple different methods. Um, yeah, that's probably a good idea actually. Uh, you can always join your local Dahlia Society as well and they will be more than happy to show you different ways to tend to your Dahlia collection. So now what's left? Hmm. Again, we are in zone 8B. We're on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. We are super, super wet here. So that's why we have to dig our dahlias up. If you are in a different zone, you wouldn't necessarily have to go to all of this trouble. Uh, we uh, also have posted a ton of videos throughout the summer showing you exactly what these uh, flowers look like. So that way, if you want to look at some of those videos, start making your list of what you want to buy in spring 2023 so that when you go to the tuber sales in the spring you already know what you're looking for from the local growers so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that part two video of our winterization if you subscribe for free you'll be alerted to when that video comes out and that should be next week sometime if not a week and a half from now i'll have to monitor the weather and see when i'm going to pull these until next time, remember, your dreams can become a reality just like ours have. All you have to do is take that very first step. And maybe it's making the list of dahlias that you want to buy. Or maybe it's helping out a local grower winterize all of their dahlias. Helping is part of the process. It helps the community and you get to learn so much from someone who's educated in the process. So maybe that's going to be your next step. Who knows? Until next time, have a great day.